If you've spent any amount of time in trying to build a mega menu in Bricks, you'll know just how difficult it is to create something good for desktop and mobile. You may have even seen my hour and a half long tutorial and you'll know how difficult it is to work with. That video led me to creating a template that does a mega menu for you while still giving you the customization that you need. And that's what I want to show you today. I'm really excited to release this project. I've spent a lot of time on this. This has been a labor of love and I really hope that you guys find this useful. This template also is on some live websites right now that you guys can check out for yourself. It's even implemented on my very own website where you can buy the template. All right, that's enough words. Let's take a look at this, how it gets set up and the options that you have. Setup is really simple. You're gonna get three files. One's gonna be a JSON file and you're gonna get two SCSS files, which I will explain in just one second. First, let's open up our JSON file. We can open this up in a text editor or a code editor like Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna do VS Code, we'll open this up, we'll copy everything that's in it, we'll go to our header template, and we'll simply just paste it in. It might ask for permission, we will just press allow, and it'll paste it in. Here we can go ahead and add in our logo, so I'll click on the image, add in the logo, and insert. And now we need to add the CSS. I mentioned there are two SCSS sheets. One, the main one, is gonna be for automatic CSS users because it uses variables from that system and the other is gonna be for those that do not use automatic CSS. For my instance, I'm gonna use the one with automatic CSS, so let's open this up in VS Code. Let's copy everything, and we're gonna go ahead and paste this into a SCSS sheet or partial. This cannot be done in a CSS sheet because it uses a lot of logic and a lot of nesting. We'll save our template, we'll refresh our homepage. Look at that, we got a mega menu set up. We got a standard menu, drop down set. We have a mega menu set, and also check this out, it is mobile responsive. So on a mobile, we have a mega menu that's going up and down and our standard menu that looks just like this. Now within Bricks, we have a few things that we can do to control some styling. We can control how these get activated by clicking on a drop down, go over to content and we'll toggle on click, hover or both. You can decide what you wanna do. Please note when you're making this change, it is only for that specific drop down. If you wanna make the same change, you need to go to the next drop down and make the change there as well. This is because Bricks doesn't apply it to the actual class, it applies it to the element. The other change we can make is the mega menu content size. Maybe we want this to be full width. So I can click on my mega menu and we can go to mega menu on the left hand side and under CSS selector, you can see right now it is header container. So it's the size of our container. But if we change this to the class of header, we'll see that it's full width. If I save, check out the front end, I can see that we now have a full width dropdown. If you want it to be the size of your dropdown, let's just say the content itself, what you could do is you can go into the header and put in the class that you see above, mm double underscore drop down mega and save. There will be a problem with this. It's not showing the content appropriately and this does not fit the content that goes inside of it. That is because Bricks is applying some overwriting CSS to the element. So you will have to do some CSS work in order to get this methodology to work. I do have this version of the mega menu on my website so you can kind of take a look at my DOM and see how I've done it, but it's totally possible. And let's really quickly hop into the CSS and take a look at what we have. At the very top, you'll see that everything for our header is here, the header, the header container, and the logo, anything that's styling those elements you'll find here and you can update. As we scroll down, you'll notice there's some sentences here like, do you want the last nav item to look like a button on desktop? You might be wondering, what does that even mean? Well, there is a link right next to this that we can copy and paste into our browser. It's gonna take you to an image or a GIF that helps describe what it does. So here's true, here's false. Look at the last button, last item looks like a button. So let's go back here. We can see that we have a selection of true or false, so we can update this. If we look at our website, we have a button. We can change this to false. And now it doesn't look like a button anymore. We have, do you want the last nav item to look like a button on mobile? We can check it out on mobile real quick. It looks like a button. We can say, eh, I don't want that. False. And look at that. It now becomes a part of your menu items here. Change this back to true. And there's some other settings here about the button that you can, you can look at and try for yourself. But if we scroll a little bit further down, we'll see style last nav button here. The CSS you see here is trying its best to mimic the action button that you've set with an automatic CSS. You can easily remove this or edit this at your will, but it's automatically set for you to try to make things a little bit easier. So we can change the base styling of the button and the hover state of the button or whatever you want. You can, you can nest everything in here. If you want the active state, 
you can change the active state no, no matter what you want, you can add it here. I'll show you a few more options that we have. I won't go through everything because I can talk at length for 30 minutes or so, but we'll have styling of links. What styles do you want your links? You can update those here, your standard, your hover, and even your active page style you can add here. Everything is done in nesting with CSS. Do you want different links styling for sticky header on scroll? So let's just say that we have a sticky header. I don't have one right now, so let's change it. Let's go template settings, header, sticky header, save. And let's say we have a different color that we want to make the background. So we're going to need a different color for our text links on scroll. What we can do is we can go back to our WP code box. We can say we want different styling for on scroll. We can turn this to true. We have a color of red, hover of blue, and an active state of magenta. So check this out on scroll, all the links turn to red. Oh, but what happens if I change this to not be a button? Let's go back up. I don't want this to be a button. I want this to be a link. I'll well, check this out. It still follows the same, same styling that we've applied. You got lots and lots of options in here. We're going to go ahead and skip some. We're going to go down to one that is here. And this is the navigation breakpoint. This is an option that allows us to adjust when will the screen change from a menu into a mobile menu or a hamburger dropdown. And so for right now, it's set to 1,100 pixels, but we can adjust that breakpoint right here. All right, without going any deeper, let's just start building a mega menu. I want to talk about this right here. We see in our bricks builder, we have three gray boxes. So let's open up our mega menu and inside the content, we'll have three boxes that say remove. We do not need these items. These are just there to show you the flow of the content and how it's flowing from desktop to mobile. So we don't need these, we can remove these. And I do have a mega menu that I want to build. Here's an example of something I found on Dribbble. I want a full width dropdown with the content only taking up the size of the container or the website container that I have set and then have three columns inside. So in here, what I can do is inside my content, I'll add in a block and we'll give this a class of something like dropdown container. Now I want this to be the max width of my website container and how I can do that is by going down to style, layout, max width, we'll type in var width vp max. And this is a variable from automatic CSS, but what that does is it makes it match the size of my container. Let's just add in a heading in here real quick. And let's also change the background to red, just so we can take a look to see what's happening. And we'll go to the front end, refresh, check it out. It's taken the width of my container, but it is not centered. So I wanna show you how we would do this. Within WP code box, if we scroll up, we wanna to go to the update the desktop mega menu dropdown, or we can find the mix in mega dropdown content. This right here is to control the container of your dropdown content. So any styling you wanna to apply to that container, you would apply within this mix in. You could style dropdown container in here. I just would not recommend it. This is not where it's meant for. We only want to style the parent in this mix in right here or affect the children from this area if we needed to. And one way we're gonna do that is that we're gonna center this to justify content center because right now it's pushed all the way to start. So I'm gonna do justify content center and it's gonna be centered. Now you might be wondering how come we did not style the drop down container that we just added? How come we didn't style that within WP code box? Why do we style it within bricks? Well, the answer to that is that you can do either one. When it comes to the mega menu drop down content, you can style it within bricks if you want to, and then make micro adjustments within WP code box. Or you can just do everything in WP code box and I'll show you that right now. If we wanted to do everything in WP code box, we will scroll down and we'll go to the custom CSS area. And we have four different areas that we can apply some custom CSS. We have a global mega menu styling. So this is just affects everything within the mega menu. We have specifically not mobile menu. So when the mobile menu is not open, style something. We have at the breakpoint that I showed you earlier, style something within our mobile menu. We also have mega menu styling on mobile menu. So only when the menu is open, style something for the mobile menu. So we have different areas that we can affect something here. And I'm just gonna do global styling. We could do our drop down container. We could have set the max width here. But for the point of this demonstration, we're gonna do everything in bricks and make adjustments as we need to in our custom CSS area. So we'll leave that there. For the sake of time on this video, I'm just gonna paste in a mega menu that I created really quickly. All right, I pasted in my mega menu 
and everything that you see here is styled within Bricks. So you don't have to style within that CSS sheet for styling the mega menu dropdown. So let's take a look on the front end. We'll see everything's looking good here. All right, let's check it on mobile. We'll look at my mega menu here and we'll see, okay, this is not in the direction that we need it. On open, we need this to be a direction of column. So we're gonna go to WP code box and we're gonna say on open. So when the mega menu styling on make on mobile menu, we're gonna change this to dot drop down container. And we want this to be a flex direction of column. Okay, there we go. Now we have it set to column, but there is one problem. Earlier we set the wrapper or the drop down wrapper to justify content center. So this is not looking appropriate. What we need to do is change it so that on mobile, it is justify content start. So I'm gonna go to WP code box and we're gonna go all the way back up. Let's go to our area here. Here's our mega menu or mega drop down content. And if we scroll down, we'll see update mobile mega menu drop down. Right now it's set to a flex direction of column, which doesn't affect anything, but we will go ahead and change this to also be justify content start. So on mobile, our wrapper should justify everything to start. And look at that. Everything's looking good here. If I condense this down even smaller, we've got a mega menu going on here. And we can check out our other menu. Here's our standard one. This is looking just fine. And we have our mega menu built. It works for both desktop and mobile. Before I end this video, I wanna show you a few more things that I think are really cool. There's a few options here of where do you want the mobile menu to slide open from. We have a selection of left, right, top, or bottom. Right now it's set to right, but let's say we want the mobile menu to slide in from the top. We can set top. We'll open this up and look at that, it comes down from the top. What about if we want it to be from the bottom? Check this out. Now it comes from the bottom. There's this other really cool feature it says should drop down menu non mega match top level nav on mobile. And what this means is that when we open up our mobile menu here, we can see our standard menu. Look at that, it looks like our menu on the front end, but maybe we don't want all those lines or, or however we've styled it, we don't want that. We want it to just look standard. We can type in false here and we'll look at this now. Now it just looks like a group of links. It's not separated by any kind of border. Now we could absolutely remove that border. Maybe we don't want the border at all on either of those. We can easily just say, uh, up here, set mobile link bottom border CSS. We could change this to none. And look at this. We don't have any border in between the items here. There's one really cool setting that I'm really proud of and it's the set mobile padding. And what this does is we have vertical and horizontal padding that we can adjust here. And when we set this, it adjusts the vertical padding, for instance, on all items. So let's change this to a extra large padding. We'll save, we'll check it out. We'll see everything else is spaced out accordingly. It's not just the top and bottom padding of our mobile menu, it's everything. Everything looks coherent. But we'll change this back to medium. I don't like the extra large look. I think medium looks fantastic. All right, but what if I wanted to change the animation of this icon when I open up a menu? I don't like how it flips. Well, we have that option here. We have a selection of none, flip, rotate. So we'll just set this to rotate. And now it rotates open. Not a ton of options, but a few just to kind of change it up. Now there are a few things to take into consideration when it comes to this template. It is a template. It will not work for every single use case. Like for instance, it doesn't work with multi-level navigation or a dropdown within a dropdown, at least not at the time of release. I am hoping to find a fix for that. Again, hoping. And I wanna say a real quick thank you to all of my testers and early adopters. You guys helped me a ton with adding customization options, finding things I never even would've thought of. You are a massive help in getting this template released. So big thank you to you. And that's it, that's my template, that's my video. You guys can find a description down below where you guys can purchase it if you're interested. And I hope to be back in the swing of video making within the next month or two. I actually think we're about to have a baby within the next day or two. I'm not sure my wife is kind of feeling that, but we'll see, I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.